So, I know the other day I made reference to um, Module 12 possibly running as a two-day block, um, and there's plenty of content to do so. I just, um, in looking at the calendar, in personally, as your uh, professor, getting a little impatient, I didn't want to um, uh, use two days. So whatever we did cover the other day, um, we, at the very least, we won't be returning to that criteria. Um, but it, it'll be blended in with the security for counterterrorism parts one, two, and three. That'll be um, probably a multi-pronged short answer question covering all three parts. All right. So whatever we did the other day will 100% um, suffice, uh, despite us only you know completing a fraction fraction of it. Um, and that's just sometimes how it goes. So today we're gonna to do the final of three parts um, regarding the security for counterterrorism in those uh, compartmentalized verticals, right? The first, right, was transportation. The second, right, was uh, stadium and entertainment venues. Today uh, we're covering retail and mall specific security countermeasures, right? For a multitude of reasons. Um, number one, since 9-11, and perhaps even some higher profile incidents pre-9-11, but definitely post-9-11, in the wake of mass and active shooter, uh, non-school related active shooter, uh, more so mass shootings and things like that. Malls, right, per the Department of Homeland Security, have teeter-tottered back and forth within the confines of, are malls a hard target or are they still a soft target like they've always been? And that argument occurs between different federal agencies, different state police agencies, uh, different jurisdictions, bottom line, I think we could all agree, any large site, right, with a lot of money invested in it that can indeed hold large populations, could at any time, right, have number one, a threat posed against it, number two, removing the adjectives hard and soft, always be a target of some sort, but as discussed in previous lectures, sometimes it takes on variables such as, in the world of crime analysis, temporal attributes, which, to keep it simple, certain parts of the year, right? Places like retail and malls are often, right, more under attack, for lack of a better phrase, word, um, or posed right, to have threats against them. The other thing is, aside from our generic knowledge of all things that are malls, right, unless you've been, I don't mean you specifically, but unless society and people within it have been um, living in a parallel universe, there has been a strong uptick in retail uh, crime across the country, specifically really focusing on East Coast and West Coast, California, New York, specifically, probably the highest risk and profile, right? And you've probably seen this in media, just an enormity, right? God bless you. Uh, or God bless you if it was a cough, doesn't matter. Um, an enormity of, of an influx, right? of retail crime. Does everybody know what I'm referring to? Yes, turning on the news, seeing stores just overtaken with people, some are masked, some are unmasked, like for identity, you know, anonymity. Some individuals, non-group, right? Pinpointing certain types of retail stores, jewelry stores, higher end, whatever it is. 
actually, while, while we're on that, and before I forget, what franchise, see if you guess this, what franchise has had the most in the last couple of years influx of what we're gonna be talking about, organized retail crime, because the fact that it is organized is, is a precursor that not a lot of people are aware of. And it's been that way for a very long time in the area of you know retail security. It's a lot more organized than you could imagine. For instance, when you see a video of a couple hundred people bombard a large store and just remove all of its contents and assets, do you think that just happened, right? All of a sudden, 200 people just met at the front door of a store? I don't think so. That's called organized. They may not look organized when they're doing it, but that those numbers and maybe who sent them there and a lot of other things that have to do with uh, factors contributing, the federal government has deemed it organized retail crime, which now, by way of some of our intro uh, articles, video, um, before we get to the uh, meat and potatoes, has incorporated the aspect of mall, right? Threats against malls, right up there, right, with retail, organized retail. All one could say, well, how is that a DHS scope uh, issue? How is that a Homeland Security issue? Well, it's a Homeland Security issue because you have mass movements and mass populations conducting a said attack. Now, also think of this and anything you've may seen in the media. What have you noticed if store employees, store security, or even law enforcement, dare I say, have spontaneously attempted a counteraction at that time when massive amounts of people um, are in the act of high, higher profile theft and things like that. What have you noticed? Well, well I'll give you a hint. One thing that comes to mind is before any attempt at a countermeasure, you don't see much resistance. You see a lot of power in numbers and people basically extracting, right, stealing goods and goods from these these publicly traded, a lot of them, facilities, stores, right, in a, in a semi-organized fashion and basically walking out. And then even sometimes when you see one person doing it, do you, you, sometimes you don't see any resistance at all, even if they have a security guard or something like that. I don't know if you've picked up on that. What, what does happen often? Well, what happens often is when countermeasures do occur, does it just stop at theft? Does any violence ensue is my point. What do you think? Could any violence ensue if you tried to stop one or 100 people from stealing goods that can be sold on the street for currency? Of course. So if you have 200 people minimum, minimum, conducting illegal acts by way of just say theft, anybody could say, ah, so what? Uh, well, once you try to counteract that, with whatever's in place or even on the spot, that could turn into what? A riot, large scale fires. Somebody might even be prepared to set off a bomb if they, th certain things don't go their way and have, right, throughout history. So that's why the antiquated vision of, oh, so what, it's shoplifting. No, it's not. Not when you have large numbers, right, penetrating large-scale stores worth billions of dollars. Going back to what I originally asked yet 
interrupted or even prevented you from even attempting to respond. What franchise, you definitely go there because I go there too, or have gone there, what franchise in America gets hit the hardest as far as or what we what we are coming to know as organized retail theft. I would say probably close. What most top three? Target number one. In the last two years alone, it's incredible how many targets have been hit and the, like basically demolished. And uh, it's a publicly traded company, and they got their own fiscal and financial issues, but. It, go, it doesn't go without saying that they um, have, have, from an organized retail perspective, got, got to hit the most. There's not any one mall, per se, across the United States that could share in that statistic, but we'll identify some parts of the country by way of even some of our introductory stuff. All right. So first and foremost, let's just come out of the gate with something. And everything is from 2023. Um, this particular article, uh, which went nationally uh, syndicated, states here, a top DHS official, right, from Homeland Security, warns of absolute threat to public safety and economy from organized retail crime. So just in that title alone, what is that saying? Yeah, we get it. There's going to be a lot of money being lost by these companies because people don't give a shit. And it's clear. Turn on the TV. Right? I mean, I almost cringe at times when I may have my daughter, right, in fourth grade with me occasionally when I go into a Target or if she cons me into going to, like, right, a Target or a... Um, not too worried about a CVS, but hey, it could happen, right? So I use my best judgment, discretion. I pick and choose like we all attempt to do. But it also has shown that the larger cities it happens the most in. But when it, what, look at the words here. What is it basically also saying? I, I kind of indicated it a little bit before. Think of the in an attempt to stop something from happening. What is the potential for also happening? What are they saying here? Just read between the lines a little bit. Terry. Um, just like prepare yourself, be prepared for what could possibly 100%. But when you see like the absolute threat to public safety, they are 100% referring to exactly what you just said. People like us, right? If we are indeed present, in certain right locations in America, in particular stores, it's almost like I'm almost right as I'm instructing you in this topic. I'm almost like to myself. I'm not even joking. In the back of my mind, almost like giggling because I used to like go to Marshalls every week to to like buy what I can for me off the clearance rack and then to sell on eBay like way back in the day. But like that's like people don't do that anymore. Like people don't even leave the house to go shopping a lot anymore. People do. We all do. But they're also referring to the fact that hey, some of these stores might have off-duty cops working. Some of these stores might have like Paul Blart mall cop, rent a cop working at them. Regardless, and what do we also see a lot? A lot of times, right? That's done to attempt to deter, but. There's not much deterrent these days, right? I think we could all agree on that. So what they're basically saying is this is like a real deal, okay? Um, before we continue on, because there are a couple things here that I may want to hit on in this article. Before everybody <clears throat> showed up, um, there were a couple of you here and uh, just general conversation. I asked if anybody knew what happened last night down in the city, down at the Rockefeller Center when they uh, did the uh, annual tree lighting. Does anybody, now that we have more people in the room, does anybody know, aside from the three people that I actually informed, does anybody know? Because I don't think they really advertise this. If you don't think there's a threat to public safety, including people like us that may have went to that, was anybody there? 
because I don't want to talk out of turn, especially if you were there. Um, and I used to go every year since my daughter was born, pretty much, literally since she was in a carriage up until a certain point, then I just stopped. And I'm not, you know, it's, I stopped because of shit that happened last night. So, you know, they have certain details of uniformed and, un, you know, uh, plainclothes officers working. And, you know, we know it's a hotbed of time in the city right now and other large cities for a lot of different reasons. Um, you always have to have your head on a swivel, be careful. Um, but they, uh, after the tree lighting, from what I understand, um, some officers in uniform were assaulted by large groups and uh, basically, uh, aside from assaults and things like that, um, a lot of their, uh, a lot of the groups were, when they were attacking the uniformed officers, were taking taking the uniformed officers' hats that they wear, like the traditional paramilitary cover, taking their hats off them, right? Which is the equivalent to basically like burning a like a police car nowadays, and they were burning like their uh, police hats, like right, in, you know, it's like it was like mass chaos. It's not exactly what you expect at a tree lighting, right? But these are the times. Why am I bringing that up? Because essentially, if you think about it, aside from the tree lighting, why do people go to Rockefeller Center? It's one of the biggest tourist attractions in the world by way of retail, right? You know that. I mean, I get forced to go to American Girl once a year down there and spend massive amounts of money. You know what that's like? Did you know they have a restaurant in that place? Good God. Isn't that where the Rockets play or something? Yeah, they're down there oh. somewhere. Yeah. They're also, they're actually out of Madison Square Garden, which is obviously around, around the way. But yeah, they're over, yeah, whatever. Yeah. My Rocket days are over, but they, yeah, they do that. Um, so, a lot going on, a lot of mayhem. Um, and it, right, so the mall and re organized retail crime runs runs parallel is the ultimate message here uh, and is 100% identified by Homeland Security and other agencies uh, to be deemed as such. Um, and to, to prove that it is a uh, organized <clears throat> endeavor uh, states here in a in a little blurb that big name retail stores now targeted by gangs in organized hits. Investigators uh, state that the son of a Home Depot worker was fatally attacked during a theft uh, in which uh, you know a big national crackdown is being forged against organized retail crime. Home Depot, another publicly traded company, always a haven for uh, massive retail theft. Um, as you can imagine. So all the big name retail stores that aren't in the upper echelons, if you will, like the Louis Vuittons, the Sephoras, and all that other stuff, right? The, the more, I guess, traditional publicly traded retail are, I guess, the ultimate target for a lot of the uh, organized. Remember, that, that's the whole point. Um, it's a... Uh, it's being done in a very organized fashion. If not an organized group, security threat group, simply targeting retail goods, because there is power in numbers. Remember, a lot of these organized security threat groups that target retail goods, and this is, a, this is like a multi-million dollar thing. I'm not just talking about, let's get some Pez by the cash register. I mean, you, you're following me here, right? This is multiple millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? This is like no joke, to the point where a lot of the employees who are hired there are purposely, purposely apply there because they are within the confines, sometimes even in the shot calling realm of the organized retail infrastructure, okay? Um, To support that, these criminal networks, right, that are targeting uh, retail in an organized fashion, 
They may be full-time drug traffickers, but they see an opportunity to, to work with a crew that's already stealing, right? Per this uh, gentleman who oversees international organized crime cases for HSI, which is Homeland Security. Um, because it's hundreds of millions of dollars, right? Um, that can easily be diverted for other activities. So it's kind of like, if you think about it, right? It's also like a top tier terror organization like Al Qaeda or ISIS, not just raising money and putting people under payroll to commit international terrorism. It's kind of like the equivalent to an international terror organization that's into also drug dealing, right? Arms trafficking, things like that. Remember, like almost like the side gigs, right? The side gigs for terror organizations. Oh, they, they're into that too? Yeah. So it's almost like you could have, dare I say, drug cartels behind and in control of a lot of possibly what even occurs here because there are hundreds of millions of dollars at stake, right? If you go, if you go to certain countries and you see exact same products sold in American targets, some of them even indicate where the products have come from. Don't be so surprised if you're out of the country or in a different state far from New York or something like that where you see product being sold at lesser level stores, right, but retail stores, that got sold on the black market in bulk by these, right, security threat groups, all right? So it's something that's been around for a long time, but because of the significance of how it has grown and who, right, that the United States government has intel about that's involved, Homeland Security would have nothing to do with it if it, if it wasn't at that level. It's not just about the money, it's who's involved. Okay. On a similar note, the other day, I think, who meant, I think it was this class. God help me if it wasn't, then my mind is really sapped. Um, yeah, I think uh, Brad, who was in here today, I think he, remember we made reference to the American Dream Mall out in Jersey over there? Anybody ever see, you know what that is on I-95, the Turnpike? Okay. And by the way, that family who owns that, I think they own a few of those ridiculously sized malls, the ones that like basically cover, you know, miles, right? One family owns like four of them. Um, and uh, malls like that, right? I even made reference to that uh, they have massive amounts of security inside, even security companies with canines. And that's not even traditional, right? Security com not most security companies don't use canines, only like top tier ones, uh, or they sub out, they subcontract out. But this mall alone, I, I, I mentioned the other day, you might already know this, depending on, you know, if you've gone there or whatever, has like 25 New Jersey State Police officers assigned to it. Imagine being a cop or like a state police officer and your assignment is to go to a mall every day. And you're not even the first line of defense. The first line of defense is who? The private security, right? It's what it is. Nonetheless, last week, American Dream Mall was evacuated after a bomb threat on what we know in this country as the day after Thanksgiving for the shopping Black Friday. Ironically, not coincidentally, because I don't believe in coincidences, just ironically, I call a buddy of mine, very good friend of mine. Uh, he reminded me for some weird reason today that we've been friends since we were 10. Uh, I don't know why he brought that up. Uh, I don't know if he's looking to borrow a couple fuzzles from me. Um, but nonetheless, we're talking about some business stuff. And then I said to him, hey, I'm, uh, I mentioned you guys. I said, I got this... Uh, decent group of uh, kids. I called you kids. Sorry, I'm way older than you. I got this decent group of kids. I, you know, it's a Homeland Security and counterterrorism class. I'm doing stuff about mall stuff today. You know, I'm talking like, like Tony Soprano to him. We're like going back and forth like two Jersey degenerates. And uh, 
I said, you got any like decent stuff that I could show them that's declassified? And he got all official right away. He's like, well, the only thing I have is the training that I uh, created and, and ran with uh, the state police and other uh, local agencies. I, I don't think I could, would want you showing that. It's tactical. I, okay, buddy, relax, relax. We're not going to fucking go SWAT in here, okay? Um, <laughs> um, but then, just to show you the chaoticness of what can happen, I said, I said, I didn't even know. I said, because, you know, I'm in New York now. I'm out of the Jersey loop a little bit, which is fine with me. I got my own shit to deal with over in good old, right, New York. He goes, I said, I, I asked him about this. I said, you guys had to evac the uh, American dream? He goes, yeah, I was in charge. Of, co of course you were. Um, thank you. I didn't ask that. But, but then, after he, you know, chilled out a little bit on his um, resume stuff that he reminds me of, um, weekly, uh, he said, oh, that was also the same day, and some of you might know this, I didn't even know this, the Jets played the Dolphins on that day, is that true? Well, that's what he's, oh, oh you, you co-signed that again, Kelvin? You were there? You were there? You were on a sideline? You were coaching? No, I'm like, does anybody know? I didn't even know, there was, I didn't even know they played that day. Okay, I'm Boston, relax, relax. I know you're getting a little, you want to fight, but you, but you know you can't, because you'll, you know, get destroyed but <clears throat> he goes oh between the Jets game and that he goes the turnpike was locked down it was a shit storm on both sides of the turnpike actually it's all on one side of I-95 if you know that area it's, it's all at the stadium and the mall are right didn't you remind me the other day they're basically or somebody that they're connected almost yeah, just about, just about connected. They might as well be. So if you can imagine what that area of North Jersey looked like. And, um, but if it's coordinated, like a lot of times it is, that's what you want. Don't think, especially if you go into this career, that it's a coincidence when there's a bomb evacuation or a bomb threat to cause an evacuation the same time as another, what did we talk about the other day? Large scale venue with at least 40,000 people inside. Don't think that's not on purpose. That's why we have to, as just humans, right? Be careful when we're out and about and everything and anything that could happen, right? Because most people have their heads up their asses. And I'm the one that's, I'm the one professor, at least that teaches this stuff that will not only say it like that, but it's, it's really the truth based on my experience, right? Because a lot of people think that can happen, won't happen, or just are glib to it happening, right? I don't want anybody I teach that may be pursuing this career, right? Subscribing to that type of thought process. All right, so um, states here. I love these live ads. They just interfere and just, and no, oh God. Anyway, wait, how do I get this? Uh, good Lord. No, don't resume. Don't resume. All right. That's what I was looking for. Okay, the X. Okay. A New Jersey mall was briefly evacuated Friday after someone called in a bomb threat on the busiest shopping day of the year. Now, could that also be some cuckoo sitting at home just starting some shit? Could it be a disgruntled employee who was fired, right? Could it be just somebody who's sitting in the parking lot with no life? Right? It could be anything. It could be literally anything. Could it also be somebody with a real bomb ready to go? Yeah, of course it could. That's the worst case scenario. Uh, on the busiest shopping day of the year. Oh, third variable. Perhaps even the first variable, right? That really is truly, in essence, based on, oh, the American dream is not normally a hard target. Well, on this Black Friday and Cyber Monday thing, guess what? 
the American Dream is in the top three in America as far as locations for anything and everything to happen. That type of um, scenario. New Jersey State Police uh, said the American Dream Mall received the bomb threat around 7.13 a.m. That's a little odd, right? A little early, but nonetheless. Um, and police quickly ordered an evac of the building out in the abundance of caution. So let's say that person was, I don't want to say of reasonable mind, but at least um, in tune with the logistics behind making a call like that, I would say knowing, you know, this isn't an identification and people who make bomb threats and using anonymity, um, but what it does dictate is we're going to cause chaos. We may have knowledge that there's a game that day, right? You have a lot of humans in a certain area trying to go from point A to point B in a very small amount of time. Because, you know, I don't know what time the game was that day, but you know there's people drinking beer in the parking lot at that, at that time too, right? So the roads are packed at that time, especially on that day, okay? Oh, and the mall on Black Friday, I think they do open, right? Don't they? Most, most places, like some even like 6 a.m. Imagine working on one. Did anybody have to work that day in like a... No? Yeah, you did? Re like re retail? Yeah. And you had to go in like super early or no? Oh, you said go fuck yourself. I'll roll in at 11. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Um, but see, the thing is, it's about intel. People, even cuckoo clocks, know. A lot of these stores. Terry, you juicing again? Look at you. What do you got? Kale? Do you? Yeah. My wife tried to make me drink that. It's I was nice. like, nah. It's huh? Good. It's kale, spinach. Um, yeah, it sounds delicious. Spinach, baby, rubula, spinach, oh, oh, I'm gonna run out of class right now and leave you behind. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? And what do you? How do you flavor it though? What do you do? You throw an apple in there at least? Yeah, apple or some agave, some sweetener. That's why you're always so upbeat. God bless you. I, I'd be drinking that. I'd be jumping out a window. You know. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but no, yeah, that's good. Agave, okay, agave. I know what that is. Like the the nice honey, right? The nectar. Good, 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 good. All organic. That's it. Well, no, I, I went organic. I went grass fed. You know, you know. Supposedly, you know, there's a lot of poison out there in the food. That's how I got my daughter not to eat McDonald's anymore. I would only give it to her once a month. You know, as a uh, you know how it goes. As opposed to every other day when I was a fucking kid. Look at where that got me. Um, but, uh, yeah, you got to be careful out there, right? That's another type of uh, ag ag agro-terrorism and food terror. Oh, boy, we could be here all day, huh? They only give me till 140. We never even saw 140 this semester, God bless you. Uh, Terry? You said there's something called agro? Ag agro, like environment, almost, yeah, like agriculture terrorism. And you know what, you, you have an idea? Huh? That's literally attacking, right? The food, the food products, and, and the growth, the farms, and yeah, it's dangerous. Um, almost like bioterrorism. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, bottom line, very short article, but the theme behind that is large scale, right? Large scale, very questionable as to what would be considered a hard or soft target in this day and age, right? There's a lot of argument behind that. All right, so let's look at, what time, give me a time check, time check. 12, 12. Okay. Okay, so first we're starting out here, not, not, not heavy on the notes, because I also want to show you a couple other things, or one other thing. Um, there, within the background of this topic, and all that is uh, countermeasures, and security for malls and retail. Um, part of the background is in fact that debate, um, even at the federal level, as to what within that vertical, including malls, is definitively, but heavily in question, 
Well, I think it's a hard target. Well, I think it's a soft target. And once again, there's other variables that play a factor. Things that we just discussed, like what could be going on in the area at, what is so funny? You are, all, dude, you're all right, but you, dude, I know I'm, I, I, I know I'm funny at times, I think I am, but I, all I'm saying is hard and soft target. What, what, are you all right? All right, all right, just making sure you're all right. Is my electricity, like, keeping you in that? You're still laughing. Is it my hair, my fade? I just got to fade. You're right? All right. I got to disclose this. The other day, Kelvin came in to the office to say hi, God bless him, right? And he says, I haven't, I've been different lately. He says, I haven't been busting chops that much lately. What did I go, a, a class? What did I go, a class where I didn't have certain energy? And I said, oh, okay. You're just, you're just poking, at, poking at the dragon then. You're poking at the dragon. I will turn it up. I will turn it back up to conclude our semester, Calvin. So you basically just stepped in a hornet's nest again, Calvin. So you keep smiling back there. And uh, yeah. So anyway, the federal government, back into serious mode, uh, the federal government deems a lot of what we're talking about today via the where, right? Not necessarily the who, because the who can vary, but the where. This is what you might have to, and I'll prepare you, of course. A short answer question could be relegated to this terminology. They call it STCP. That's not me making up an acronym. Soft targets and crowded places. Now, I got a problem with that. I don't think anything's a soft target anymore, but I'm not biased. I'm not one of them who's gonna try to indoctrinate you with my personal thoughts, um, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, because frankly, maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. A lot of the times, right, a mall could be, a large portion of the year, a soft target. Okay, well, the day I think it's a soft target will be the day the jerk-off's running through the mall with the IRL 15. So I'll continue to operate as such, right? But nonetheless, the, what's the biggest takeaway? It's almost contradictory if you look at that. How, it, without my, I'm not even opinionating here. How could that be, and once again, we're not focused on arguing with the government today and their terminology, but if you think about it from a security perspective, anybody, please, Soft targets in crowded places. It's kind of like it's kind of like the term large shrimp. It's an oxymoron. How so? Seriously, come on. My mouth's getting dry. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Any place with like that's heavily crowded. Like this open field out there, I don't know what the fuck is going on out there. They're supposedly building the new computer center that we got 700 million or some bullshit to build. Um, you'll be, you'll all be fucking gone by then, right? Before they even break the ground. Um, but just say we filled that field with a bunch of people, including us, a bunch of jerk offs out there freezing, standing around for fucking nothing, right? Just say, just hypothetically to experiment. You put a thousand people out there right now, which is nothing. You put a thousand of us out there right now, sorry, that becomes a hard target. Some random field off of Melville Road, is that, what is this, Melville Road? Right, Melville Road, empty field, brown grass, nothing. A thousand people standing there, something. College campus, heightens things a little bit. Retail, all over the joint. You get it? Side note, to me, this little area that we're in right now, but more so inclusive of 110, you know what to me bothers me the most? Not like the Target and the Walmart. What do you think may be a little off the cuff by way of a little interesting in this little section? Yeah. That's a great identification. I, I wasn't referring to the airport. That goes without saying. Way lesser though, yeah. Yeah. That Ferris wheel and the fucking swings and like, 
If somebody, you know what I mean? If somebody wanted to cause chaos, kids, bunch of kids, right? Especially like when it's nice weather, you can see it from a mile, right? Technically not a hard target, but especially because it's like very small type of amusement park, but and it's one, I think, it, is it one way in, one way out? It looks like it's one way in, one, I don't know. Is, yeah? Is there? Yeah. Okay. But you can park on like 110 too, like for it too, right? Do they have a separate, I don't even know. But nonetheless, sorry, got off on a little, little tangent. But I'm just letting you know that a lot of times, and it's more for, for situational awareness, things that are often deemed, even by Department of Homeland Security, in post 9 11 times, soft targets, when you add that variable of the fact that it could be a crowded place, because they're also inferring that the crowded place could hold a decent amount of people, right? You take any mall, what mall do you go to around here? Do you go all the way down to Roosevelt? Okay. It's not a small mall, it's pretty big, right? It's your typical pretty big mall in a metropolitan area, right? fit a lot of people in there. So you can call a soft target all you want. I'm not gonna spend much more time on this debate. I'm just telling you the debate does exist. And the simple fact that when you have a crowded place, especially in this day and age, when you have those other variables like organized retail theft, you know, it, pl it plays a lot of major factors in what could go down, all right? Okay. So DHS defines these locations, right, as a couple, right, a couple of factors would be inclusive of they're easily accessible, right, usually off major highways, a lot of, lot of different, a uh, lot of parking, certainly not parking like here. You don't have to, like, fight each other for parking spots at most of these places. Um, E easily accessible to major roadways, that's always a big deal, not just with consumers, but with people posing threats. Um, and having the large numbers of, of people. The other thing is, they do intel, they do recon, right? People posing threats. Usually, even, even look at that American dream. Okay, you got 25 state troopers, you got a bunch of uh, mall cops, right? Meaning the private security, et cetera. You fill that mall on a good day, do you have enough security? Is there enough security at anywhere? <laughs> no way, man. Right? So those countermeasures are always limited. Okay? Um, hence, big thing, making them vulnerable to attack, right, in an urgent focus area. Okay? Or have become, sorry an urgent focus area for Homeland Security. And we're talking, what we were talking about before, a Target, a Walmart, right? Based on this day and age and what, what does go on and has a propensity to continue to go on with the large organized theft, including but not limited to, you know, mass shootings at malls and things of similar nature. States here, terrorists and other violent actors have plotted against uh, or attacked such places using another big thing here that even Timothy McVeigh did with Oklahoma City, uh, using simple, low-cost methods with minimal identifiable indicators. Think about it. Sometimes to carry out a really large-scale terror plot, it costs a lot of money. Sometimes it does not, right? Primarily, if a threat were to be presented against a location such as a ball, a high probability demonstrates that, and this is a little bit of new info that runs parallel with what we're talking about today, that domestic violent extremists are often groups to be said perpetrators. That is not to be confused, right, with domestic violence. You know what they're saying there. Domestic terrorism, right, but violent perpetrators subscribing to domestic terrorism. And once again, that is not relegated to a specific race like a lot of them are. Right. As far as the perpetrator, it's not a one stop shop for, oh, it, oh, it's all white 
uh, supremacists. Oh, it's all uh, 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 black militia groups. Oh, it's all uh, this group or that group. There is no one finite identifiable answer to who is causing it because it, have, it has even gone international within our borders. States here, since January 2020, uh, 22, uh, these DVEs, domestic violence um, uh, extremists, have conducted three fatal attacks in the homeland, right, on our soil, resulting in 21 deaths and multiple non-lethal attacks. U.S. law enforcement has disrupted over half a dozen other DVE plots, right? And this, this isn't all the stats. This is just one identification of one specific type of group in their chosen destination by way of what we're talking about today. During the same period, only one attack was conducted by an individual inspired by a foreign terrorist organization. The individual who was awaiting trial at this time um, was likely inspired based on intel by a spiritual mentor of Al-Qaeda and Taliban narratives and allegedly wounded three New York City Police Department officers on New Year's Eve that year. Collectively, these were things kind of like support our uh, focus today. Collectively, these incidents focused on a variety of hard and soft targets, including what we talked about, right, with houses of worship, faith-based organizations, um, retail locations, healthcare infrastructure, were they referring to? Healthcare infrastructure? Side, no side note to what we're talking about today, but nonetheless, what, hospitals, doctor's offices, uh, any type of medical facility, uh, and obviously what we talked about the other day as well, transportation sector. This is what drives my point home for you today a little bit. The most lethal attack of that year um, occurred in Bay of 2022 in Allen, Texas, where a now deceased attacker killed eight people at a shopping mall. So I don't care if it's one incident or 50 in any time frame. That's enough for me stating that this location is still on the radar, right, of people with bad intentions. The attacker was fixated on mass violence, right? Hey, crowded places, mass violence. They often go hand in hand. And held views consistent with racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists. Well, we can't control how many of those personalities are lurking, right, around every jurisdiction in America. There's nothing we can do about that. They're always going to be there. Unfortunately, it'll probably even grow more so, which is where the vigilance comes in. An involuntary celibate, um, violent extreme ideologies, uh, judging from writings and online activities. So sometimes the intel is out there to thwart these threats. Sometimes the intel on certain individuals, right, with bad intentions who unfortunately get to pull a caper off like this, sometimes the intel is discovered later on, right, that maybe could have prevented said attacks, but that's just the nature of the, uh, of the business, unfortunately, all right? Um, time check, time check. Okay. Uh, I was gonna use this um, one particular document, but I, I think what I'd like to do is bring back our um, terror database. Remember this, you did an assignment. You're not doing any assignment, relax. Kelvin was just about to ask me, when is it due? I didn't even assign it, relax. But nonetheless, remember the um, global terrorism database? I pre-packed it with um, by, by way of selecting criteria. I, they didn't have malls or retail in particular, but they had business and tourists. That was the closest I could get to uh, possible data that would correlate with attacks. Nonetheless, based on what years did I select? I think I left the years open-ended. 
but I selected United States and um, target type, right, to be business and tourism. And I just want to, we we'll do a quick little comparison and contrast as to some of these incidents, right? So remember, we have our column set up where we have dates. I'm only using um, the United States. We have cities here, I'll try to group those. We have perpetrator group, right? Because some of those um, repeat themselves. Always an interesting area for data, fatalities versus injuries. Uh, once again, target type, by and large, businesses and tourism. And you know those could be inclusive of malls and other retail. So all I wanted to do to kind of like ride out the rest of this class in the next couple minutes is simply to um, pick out um, a couple of incidents. Oh, I think it only goes to 2020. Um, pick out a couple incidents um, via location uh, of the United States and what similarities or differences, um, primarily similarities, may run uh, through with some of them. Let me just uh, sort that. And first, let me... Stay my one second. All right, we'll see how many are in New York, we're in New York City, just, and then we'll pick another part of the country. So starting here in um, 2017, New York City, according to this, jihadi inspired extremists killed eight, injured 13, and it included an educational institution, uh, Private citizens and property tourists. Nonetheless, let's look at it, see what what, rep, what they're talking about there. Um, but it does have a correlation. That particular event, which from 2017 in our area, our area, included an assailant driving a Home Depot rental truck. There's your. There's one little connection with retail. Um, even though it wasn't a Home Depot, per se. Home Depot rental truck entered a bike path in an attempt to run over civilians on the West Side Highway. Uh, following that initial attack, that assailant exited the vehicle, was shot by a police officer after displaying an imitation firearm, at least eight people, um, including two citizens, right, heavy tourism area, uh, it always seems like whenever there's a major attack, because uh, that would be considered major mass casualty uh, in New York City, it always seems like, un unfortunately, um, uh, as well as homegrown victims, always seems like a heavy tourist um, victimization rate uh, is always present. Five Argentinian tourists, one Belgian tourist were killed and 13 other people, including the assailant, etc. cetera. Uh, ISIS, and ISIL claimed that the assailant identified as Seifulo, whatever that name was, was one of the caliphate soldiers. So whether they knew him or are taking credit for it, nonetheless, there is a correlation there, all right, as to what we were referencing. Uh, let's see what this one is. In 2012, 
uh, an assailant through uh, an incendiary device at a bodega, retail nonetheless, in Queens. Uh, damages were reported, but no, but their extent is unknown. This was one of four arson-related attacks in Queens on the date. So th on that particular date, over 10 years ago, uh, there were, once again, probably no coincidence, four arson-related attacks, because remember, anytime you have something like this, that causes, right, fires, things like that, as well as like an initial explosion, what have you. Uh, Ray Lazier Lengend uh, was uh, arrested and claimed responsibility for said attack. Um, let's go to more recent um, events. So you see how like a lot of major cities in the United States are often uh, jurisdictions um, for things to occur. Uh, you see how here in uh, Berkeley, California, quite a grouping, even Beverly Hills. And you see a lot of um, perpetrator groups Right, it's, it, it's a exorbitant amount of perpetrator groups claiming responsibility for them. And most of it is based on radicalized uh, religion and obviously political views, radicalized that uh, being the key. Um, Chicago, as if they don't have enough problems, uh, throughout the last few decades, an exorbitant amount of, um, kind of, Chicago's often like a New York City metropolitan area, a lot of different populations from a lot of different uh, continents um, often settle there, and just like you have the good with the bad, a lot of times when, you know, security threat groups form in different jurisdictions, um, that can, in effect, be, uh, a creator, if you will, of what often happens as larger scale group efforts um, towards, look, look at the amount. We're talking almost a thousand incidents just attacking businesses, right? Now this is a lot of these, perhaps a, a strong bulk of them are pre 9-11. So that's another precursor I wanted to drive home that may be part of the review too. This is not some new phenomenon, right? The fact that retail as a vertical of target types, remember, what are we talking about in this last three part, so official, three part series that we've been entangled with uh, including transportation, sports and entertainment, and uh, today with uh, mall and retail, right? It's jurisdictional, a lot of it. But if you look at the calendar dates, a strong bulk of it shows that organized security threat groups, including but not limited to a lot of which are may, st may still be involved in a lot of what we see that goes on right today, you know, primarily in the media. Just when you think 200 younger generational individuals that storm, if you will, a Walmart, usually it's just not 200 people of a certain age that just were chatting online uh, and said, let's just do this today. It happens, right? They're often paid by larger scale groups that are often, right, promulgated by religious, racial, political, 
or ethnic right, um, foundations. And we're not trying to correlate any particular generation with being radicalized. They're looking to make money for themselves, profit short term for themselves, sell some stuff on the street. But the true essence behind the chaos and the mayhem, right? We're talking decades. This is, it's not new, right? It has been mitigated at times, but New York City, for instance, New York City metropolitan area, which we are still considered despite a little out of the jurisdiction, if you look at the data, we're back to a lot of what went on in the 1970s and 80s. So you take people like yourselves that may be working part-time or full-time in certain verticals, right? To earn a living, maybe even pay part of your tuition, but have some bucks in your pocket like any college students. You know, not to try to strike extra fear in things because it could just be the same day I show up to shop at one of these locations or something like that instead of tripping over boxes from Amazon Prime. Still the target types remain consistent, you know? <clears throat> retail, name brand, like publicly traded retail companies that are in it for the long haul. I told you back many moons ago when we were covering uh, other criteria a lot of these companies and organizations put millions of dollars aside in the beginning of the financial fiscal year when they're budgeting and they take the loss in the beginning of the year. So they'll put minimum, right, 10 to 50 million aside knowing that they have internal theft from their own employees, organized retail theft. They know they're taking a hit. I don't think they expect it by way of malls, right, from a financial standpoint, the level that it has reached in the last two years, right? Because we're at least on the same page. You've, you've seen at least once in your, in your comings and goings, right, in looking at something on the media, the amount of incidents that are occurring in, 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 in facilities like this like this is not new you have to be aware of this all right but also to drive the point home a lot of these groups regardless of race political and uh, ethnic origin are still in the business of conducting chaos and a lot of times it's simply easier to say oh let's go for the role play let's go for the target out here on 110 that's across from a college campus, right? Technically, it's a hotbed. And look at that target, one way in, one way out, right? One way in, one way out. Uh, oh, actually, no, that's wrong. That's wrong. There's the entrance off of 110, and then you can go out the side route to what's that main other perpendicular road that goes down, whatever, to uh, Conklin down there, whatever. It's another thing. Always know your routes. Be familiar with routes. Right, Kelvin? Routes. Route reconnaissance. Route reconnaissance. Okay. You done for the day? You good? You good? Is this anybody's Friday? I know I've asked that. Yeah? Who has school tomorrow? <laughs> Amateurs, if you do. Um, what's today, the 30th? Okay, we're back. One, two, three. We're back on what is Tuesday, the fifth. What is Tuesday for real? Fifth, fifth, seventh. Fifth and seventh. Review on the twelfth. Stand by on the modality in which that review. Um, high probability or prob medium probability that we'll um, do a review online or we might be in person. I don't know yet, but 
Schedule-wise, keep coming. It's okay. You can keep inching up. It's all right. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop you. I'm, I'm out the door too, mentally. Um, oh, you're leaving? Oh, oh okay. Um, fifth, seventh, and review on what did I say? The twelfth, and then after the twelfth, um, I'm not going to relegate your final assessment on one day like they want us to technically do. Uh, well, I am, but no, I'm not. Um, I'll leave it open for like a two-day window, and you just complete it by a certain date, right? And some of you will email me asking for an interpretation, even though I did a fucking review, and it's okay. It's all right. You'll be all right. It'll be some, from somebody that's not here, right? But that's okay. All right. Anyway, listen. Have a good weekend. Um, that's it.